Okay. 因为上次上次编辑那个编辑到我我快吐血了。<笑>上次我把大家的脸删掉，弄到我整个人就是弄了好久。我说这次不要了，这次就只看到我的脸就好了。<笑> Hi Jen， Hello， 大家，我、oh, Jen 你好快乐哦。<笑>好。来给一下，呃，我看 y a n 第一次来 ，so， 嗯、um, ，我要讲一下什么呢？我要介绍我自己，我叫 Julie， 我是 Motherly Note School 的主办者。然后呢，我以前是做 Hedge Fund 的，后来呢，因为一些原因，后来就变成就是离开我，我，我，我金融业，然后就是。疯狂教小孩子怎么阅读中文跟数学，因为那时候小孩子生不出来，所以呢，就我老公就说：“那你把你的工作给辞掉，这样子，然后就专心的、安心的去生孩子。<笑>”然后我们就、我们就、我们就生，我们就搬到加拿大去，就是鸟不生蛋的地方，因为本来怎么样生都生不出来。后来一般去加拿大，然后就生孩子了。<笑>然后我一直都是呃很疯狂热爱，就是教小孩子阅读啊、数学之类。我看刚刚谁进来了 ，Veronica 吗 ？Hey Veronica、Margaret， 你们希望我讲中文还是英文？都可以，都可以 ，Margaret 也是都可以。OK。好，那我就继续中文哦，还是我中英 mix， 我中英 mix 好了，因为万一看回顾的人都是跟上次一样的话，那就我就完蛋了。OK， 好，所以呢，我们就开始教中文，然后之后我就开始了一个部落格，部落格里面，然后就有很多疯狂的，就是虎妈就开始跟啊，然后我们大家就开始，呃，就是研究怎么教小孩子中文，对吗 ，Jen？ <笑>对，后来就呃 ，Facebook 里面就有很多，呃，就很多的妈妈进来，我们交了很多朋友。之后因为 COVID 的关系，就开始了就是网上教学。网上教学以后，我就发现，我就把小孩子交给小孩子的那一套带来，就是 Motherly Notes 的学校，然后效果非常好，所以我来这边跟你们就是分享。那上次呃讲到的就是。上次讲到的是环境嘛，对不对？环境讲了一个多小时，今天要开始真材实料的，就是开始教小孩子怎么认字，耶、yeah, ！有没有很开心<笑> ？So we're gonna get to you know the the recognizing the word part， 就是开始一些呃基础要要怎么跟小孩子教字了。那 James， 你的小孩子几岁啊？呃，我的女儿她快快六岁了。快六岁哦，那那很好，很刚好啊。这边有谁的小孩子是宝宝的？有宝宝的吗？我今天会从宝宝讲到幼儿，讲到就是大孩子，因为我们通通都有。OK， 所以基础来讲呢，我如果没有 chart 的话，我就不是我就不是金融业，而且这个是我女儿帮我想的、哦，因为她最近在学那个，在学算。算几率，还有一大堆的，就是在 AOPS 拿那个 counting and probability， 所以他<笑>最近在玩 Venn diagram， 然后他说：“妈妈，你可以把它弄成 Venn diagram。”我说：“好。”所以呢，学语言就是看、听还有说。然后你如果三个都有的话，你就是等于在那颗漂亮的花朵那边，<笑>就是耶， yeah, 我成功了。所以呢，在在你你你你达到这里之前呢、啊、，OK， before you get to here， right， 你需要知道怎么看跟听这两块做好之后呢，你才能说，因为你这边不够熟悉的时候，你的说就不会来，对吗？你们的经验也是这样吗？所以我今天就是跟你们讲听跟看。要怎么开始？那其实有很要这个要讲完的话，可能要好几个小时。所以呢，我今天先讲怎么做字卡，然后呢，这两块把它做好之后呢，我们就有这个 aha moment， 或者是
，你知道 AHA 还是什么吗 ？AHA 还是帮助皮肤好的水果酸。<笑> Just kidding. OK， 好。Nancy， 我有我有我有讲笑话 ，OK？ 你看还是没有人笑。<笑> I got it. Joke got of the day, it. OK？ 我最近在疯狂做脸。<笑> the AHA, OK, is a fruit acid peel. It's good for your face. OK， 好来，今天今天我来讲字卡。可是字卡之外呢，我们知道呃，做字卡之外还有什么？不但要看，对不对？你还要说，所以这两个是合并在一起的 ，OK？ 你没有跟绘画在一起，你的字卡也没用，除非除非你现在是大学生，然后呢，你读其他的语言，完全不用说，你只要去考试而已，那你用字卡就可以了。可是以小孩子来讲的话呢，我们一定会就是搭配声音啊、动作啊之类的 ，OK？ 下一个。主要呢，做字卡就是有几个规则。第一，你的字要非常大。所以我看一下谁来了，因为我知道有一些人听不懂。从几岁要开始做字卡给小朋友？我等一下会开始说。Does anyone here need English? Can you raise your hand? Jen, I'm going to kill you. <笑> Do you need me to speak in English, Jen? You can tell Angie to come and translate for you, okay? Yes, you can have my daughter come and translate. No, I'm good. I'm good. You can do Mandarin. I'm good. Or you can do Cantonese. That will work too. Oh yeah, then then nobody will be here listening to me. Actually, okay. It, <laughs> 因为我的广东话超烂的。我看，呃、uh, ，Who else? Does anyone need English here? Hey, do you guys think I should just do English because 很多上次的人都有在听 Maybe 这边有人听不懂英文的吗？没有。OK， 好。What Nancy？ 你要说什么？没有，我说你都已经讲了一半。中文了，你要不要继续讲中文？然后你再录一个英文的上。不要，我不要重新录。你要我的命吗？<笑>这很长哎、欸。等一下，我刚刚这样录下来，大家会觉得我神经病。没关系，你知道我上课的时候，我学生也觉得我神经病。It's okay. Okay, I'm gonna switch to English because I feel like a lot of people didn't come, but they registered because we had a lot of registrations because they think I will always put a recording up, right? Maybe. Maybe if I feel good, I will put a recording up. If not, <laughs> if nobody attends these in the future, I will not put a recording up. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna do it in English because 我觉得有很多人上次 Yeah, I think somebody somebody needs English. I'm gonna switch to English. Okay, so there's a lot of books, or I see a lot of flashcards out there that don't do it the way I want them to because. The kids get distracted. There are good flashcards and there are bad flashcards. I'm going to show you what good flashcards are. Not all flashcards are created equal. Okay, not all education is created equal. Not all books are created equal. And most of the flashcards out there really stink. Okay, because the words are not big enough. The words need to be big enough, especially for babies. And and second thing is. It should only, only have the word on one side. I don't want to see picture. I don't want to see animation. I don't want to see any other stuff. I don't want to see color. I just want to see a word. Because, for babies, that's what they're going to concentrate on. If you put little dots, little happy faces, little pictures everywhere, you know, logo, whatever it is. They're gonna think, what is it that you're trying to teach me? So, here's an example of you know how I do cards by age. So when they are when they are babies, the front side is just a word. For example, water. Okay, this is baby. This is toddler. This is you know elementary school and up. 
And on the back side, I'm going to have a picture. And this is a very important point for babies. And I'd say toddlers under four, you're going to want a very realistic photo, realistic, no animation, no cartoon, because their world, they don't understand animation yet. Okay. You're going to want just a very realistic photo of something that they've seen before. This is very important or else they're not going to learn what you're trying to teach them. When you get to toddler, you know, very, very early toddlers, if they are fast, they can learn doing, they can do the phonetics or phonic system. Okay. Um, here is when you can combine doing or pinging or whatever it is that you're teaching, um, you know, your own, your, your own system of how to pronounce things um, next to the word and a picture. Now, when they get to elementary school, then you'll see my cards in my books in my classrooms only have a word and doing on there as Jen's kids have seen. Like we have, we, we go, we go flashcard happy, right? Jen, you print out hundreds of flashcards every, every quarter. It's basically just for me, really. <laughs> She prints out, we give out hundreds of flashcards every quarter for our students doing not just words. Actually, most of the time, it's not just words, right? It's, it's idioms. So they learn hundreds. Now, when you are teaching the flashcards, you have to have, especially for babies, you need to have movement and sound. So if you're teaching them you know, like eyes, yan jing. You gotta point to your eye, yan jing, and then hold up the hold up the card. So then they know, oh, okay, you're pointing here. And then the word means, you know, eyes. And you have to do that many, many, many times. These are all very important. They seem very like a given, but you'd be surprised how many people don't do it right because I see it all the time. Okay. Parents are like, oh, look, card. Here's uh, you know, sway. And then, the, you know, the, the card have everything on there. They have like little cartoon character, this, everything. And the, the kid doesn't know what to focus on. Or they just say, here, this is, you know, water. And then they don't point to anything. They don't point to the word. They don't tell the kid, you know, this is what I'm, I'm trying to teach you. So the third one, which you think is, you know, I guess, taken again as a known fact, but nobody does it, is you had a point, you have to point to the word you're teaching. You got a point. So I used to like point to everything that I'm reading to my kid. So she, they suddenly, you know, have that link where they know, oh, 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 does that make that sound? English and Chinese. Okay, you got to always point. And a lot of people, they forget to point because for parents, it's easy to just read and they forget to point. Even when you're, you know, doing a picture book, you got to point. And then the repetition. So last time we talked about like how to split up your day for babies, for toddlers, for kids, right? So babies, attention span, short. Every time you flash your card, you're going to be doing it in 30 second, one minute or two minute increments. You know, the, the younger they are, the shorter their attention span is. So the shorter you, you have that time to uh, per session to flash your card. So let's say you are teaching, you know, five characters today. You flash them while you're changing your diaper, you know, um, like diaper and then put up the diaper, you know, or go smelly and then you go, ooh, smelly, right? Um, so you, if you change your diaper eight times a day, you're doing that eight times a day and that's great. So the number of times you repeat for someone to remember something is at least 30. So it's at least 30. And the younger they are, the more you have to spread it across the days. So you have to keep repeating. Um, and then once they get it in their long-term memory, then, then you're fine. The other thing is we have a lot of students that come to our uh, school and 
a parent say, hey, you know, the, the, the fonts that you use, my kid can't read that. Can you change it to like book font? And then my answer is always no. No, I will not change it to book font because what do you mean they can only read it in book font? A word is a word is a word. What if someone writes a note to them that they can't understand it, right? You have to be able to read it in all different fonts. So that means even if you didn't bring your word card out to say dinner or your friend's place or on vacation, you can write out, write out the characters and show it to the baby. And then they associate, you know, what the word really looks like and variate, variate the way you write it. You know, sometimes um, I, I write it. Sometimes I have my other kid write it. Sometimes I have my husband write it. You know, everybody has different handwriting. It's good to let them see different fonts. So in, um, we, we had a little, we had, we actually had a little comment from, you know, I put out the, the set of books called Han Zi Yi Qian, right? Learning 1000 characters. We have that set out on Amazon right now. And somebody was commenting like, your fonts are all over the place. I'm like, yeah. Why did you do that? I'm like, because, because I want your kid to be able to read the word in every context, right? They're like, can you change it? I'm like, no. <laughs> So you better learn it in all fonts. Um, so when you're at home, make sure you do cards with varying fonts, okay? And number six, I know aggressive parents want their children, want their babies to learn very, very hard words, but sometimes it's not appropriate because it has to be relatable. Just like I said last time, it has to be relatable to what they know and what they understand. So for babies in their world, it's cry, laugh, smile, eyes, nose, mouth, hair, you know, give me my milk <laughs> or, you know, play with me or this is a chair or this is a table. And then, you know, when you get to older kids, then, you know, you switch it up, but it has to be appropriate for the age. So when you buy those set of cards that are already made, a lot of them, you have to take out the stuff that you know your child doesn't understand. Like if they haven't seen England or sometimes some always will, you know, Ingo on the card, right? Or I don't know, something vague or ambiguous. Um, take it out, take it out. It's always in the cards, but don't use it. So Nancy asks, when can you start to teach um, the stuff? Does anyone want to have a guess of when you can start? I kind of gave a clue because I did say baby. But like, do you guys want to take a guess? Two years old. Two. Or anyone else? See, Jen? I like teaching class a lot better. <laughs> I know the answer, so I can't be saying it. So keep going, keep going. You're doing great. Like my kids answer me. <laughs> so here we go. So the answer is you can start as early as three months. That's when their eyes start focusing. So before the eyes can focus, they can probably focus like this close. So make sure when you're doing the card, you're not like all the way across the room or something, right? Um, you could start at three months when you're changing diaper, do the word really big, like eight by 11 sheet of paper, okay? Something very huge so they can see. And then make sure you put it like within one foot or two feet of their face so that they can see the word. Um, so I'm going to talk about babies first because we'll go on. Um, this is my kid when she was not one yet. I told you I'm a crazy mom and I live by the fact that I am kind of crazy because I, I study, live and breathe uh, education, right? Um, so I did start flashing my kid at three months. And when they don't talk and they don't understand you, life could get really, really hard. But the moment that they start reacting to things that you teach them, 
you get this big reward. So at um, my kids started standing up before one year old. She was always a little bit nuts, but I, I started flashing them at three months. And at eight months, when they started sitting up, they started reacting to my cards. Um, and that's when, that's when my husband and I got super excited and knows that this works. So this is, we've been flashing, we've been flashing her card with like nonstop being like an idiot talking to ourselves every day, because, you know, babies, they're like a blob of meat, right? <laughs> you talk to them and they're like, Bleh. and, and so, um, this is when we started reaping rewards and I'm going to just show you like my daughter, she can't talk at this time. She's one, not even one. Actually, I think this was around 10, 11 months. Um, and she, she could read, she could read Chinese. <laughs> Sorry for my very messy house. This is what? So there's a lot of repetition. And if you notice, there is only one word, one character on one side. We repeat a lot and then we couple it with movement. So I teach her, this is, this is your head, right? So every time I hold up that word, she knows I'm talking about her head and she'll point to her head and that's how she communicates with us. It's kind of cool, right? Like kids, they actually understand you. They just can't talk. So I encourage everyone to, you know, treat, treat their little one um, like a, like a big kid, like a big kid. I think that's very important. Um, I'm sacrificing a lot because this is the time where my house was messiest. Nancy knows I'm usually a freak. <laughs> Okay, yes. and I am like blasting how messy I was <laughs> when my first <laughs> kid came out. And this is more, this is uh, when she was one. And we used everyday terms, as I said before, you know, you use stuff that they understand. So this is uh, beats nose. <laughs> And you're going to see this. It's okay if you're messy. We were, I made hundreds of cards, okay? Hundreds of cards. And you'll see that they're all the same, only words on one side. And then I'll put a picture on the other. But most of the time, I'm doing the movement. I'm making the sound. She's only looking at the back when I'm not there and, you know, she she's alone. Um, so that's kind of important. And other than this, last time I also said you guys should put like labels all over the place. Like you should tape it on your couches, put it on your tables, you know, um, like this is a couch or this is a table. Okay, that's a repeat. This is where, so dog, right? She knows what a the sound the dog makes. And when we go out for walks, we see people walking their dog. So every time we take her on a walk and see, she sees a dog, I'll be like, woof, woof, wong, wong, you know, or I'll make a dog sound. And she can't speak that well yet, you know, at this age. Um, so she knows that dogs make that sound. So that's how she responds to, she knows this word.
嗯，你就整篮拿过去嘛。他知道打，他知道打，他知道打。你知道他为什么在笑吗？因为他看到地上有“笑”这个字。为什么？可爱。对。然后那是打，所以他会讲打鼓。我没有教他打人哦，我是说打。<笑>所以打是打鼓 ，OK。然后再来就是，我就说，哎，你一边教，然后现在要开始教，就是他们怎么讲话。其实他他已经想要讲话了。And then they make a lot of sounds. Sorry, I forgot to do English. They make a lot of sounds, right? And they want to talk. They want to talk like you. But how do they talk? The, the more they listen, the more they're going to talk when they are ready. And that that goes for all ages. That goes for、um, like elementary school students. A lot of people say, "Hey,、um, my kid, they understand Chinese. I talk Chinese to them. They don't talk back. They they resist to speak in Chinese." And guess what? It's because they didn't listen to enough. It's not enough. They're not confident enough. You know, they need to listen to more and more and more. Until they go, oh, I've heard that like ten thousand times. I can say it. That's not a problem, you know. You need to listen to it enough in order to start talking in Chinese. It's the same with kids. And sometimes people think I'm crazy. Well, like they do now, right? So I'll take my baby in my arms. We always lived in an apartment building, you know, in Toronto or or Boston. I've always lived in the big cities, and then I will go to the. I'm waiting for the elevator. Some other person comes in the hallway. I'll be talking to my kid, you know, who's like drooling, going there. Right? They don't understand me. Looks like, but I'll be like, "Mommy's at the elevator. You see this? These are buttons for the elevator. We're gonna go down. This is the down button. You see this? I'm gonna press the down button. Now I'm pressing the button." Oh, now I've pressed the button. Oh, the button lit up because you know what? I pressed the button. So I seriously had my neighbors look at me like, <laughs> like I'm crazy, right? But how else are they going to know that this is how you say it? So then, the moment that they talk, they're going to be like, "Mommy, I want to press the button. Mommy, it's lighting up. You know, mommy, this is happening." Um, but I did this, you know. I'll, I'll get on the elevator, and that's even more embarrassing. So I was always embarrassed all the time, right?、Um, I'll get on the elevator. I'll be like one, two, three, four. <laughs> you know, not a care for people around me. And I'll be like, we're going to the ground floor. Ground floor means it's on the ground. That's the lowest floor because that's where we get out. So I'll do this. All day, every day, three times a day, four times a day. Every time I go on the elevator, I was a very tired mom.、Um, but what that brought was a lot of conversation. So I have another daughter. This is her, me and her playing. And when we play, I always put words on her play items. We'll draw things and we'll do role play.、Um, this is my other daughter. Oh well, this, you're the narrator. I talked about that. People might think you're weird, which they thought I'm weird. So I'm gonna skip that. But this is Yan. This is what? Look at this. Five. Yes, this is five. Tang. 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 Look. Look. Tang. 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 再拿盐，你刚刚的盐呢？翻面了这里。盐呢？盐倒进来，然后再摆一点牛奶。咕噜咕噜咕噜咕噜咕噜咕噜，然后一个鸡蛋，两颗鸡蛋，有两颗鸡蛋。鸡蛋呢？只要打两颗就好了，咔嚓，咔嚓，扑通扑通，弄进去了。然后最后我们要放发粉。你刚刚自己丢到远远的地方，发粉去很多会怎么样？膨
胀，会膨胀，来倒进来，哇，倒这么多啊，倒了这么多以后怎么办？到时候会怎么样？三四五六七八五六七八九十。哦，一二三四五六七八九十。哎呀，哦好，全部不倒进去了。然后把它揉成面包形状，小面包形状在哪里？捏捏捏捏，小猫咪，捏捏捏捏,捏成什么？你的面包嘞？在这里。哦，捏好了，我们要把它摆到什么进去？面包。摆到哪里？烤箱咕隆咕隆咕隆在烤喽，咕隆咕隆咕，摆了以后会怎么样？膨胀，膨胀。So you see, I make a lot of these word cards while we play, and then they understand, uh, you know, to to read that ever since they were little, right? And then it'll go on. Um, but my point being, at first, it's a hundred percent me talking. And then it becomes ninety, and then eighty, and then seventy. And as they grow older, then they talk. And then now they give me book reports. <laughs> okay. And then now I don't have to talk. Yay. Okay. So it goes from <laughs> what? <laughs> it goes from one hundred to zero. <laughs> so it will. You, your life will get better. Okay. So for the new moms, your life will get better. A lot better. Um, but at first, it's like this. It is very tiring. You invest in the first, you know, couple years, and then and then you're home free.、Um, so I'm gonna skip that one, and then I'm gonna talk about slightly older kids.、Um, so it's the same, okay? Maybe you can be a little bit less theatrical. <laughs> you don't have to be as theatrical, okay? But older kids.、Um, Elementary school students or kindergartners that come to our program who have bought the books, these are what my flashcards look like. So they don't need to be fancy. What we do is I have them cut this like lengthwise, right, and then fold it in half. So our flashcards aren't, aren't even on, you know, real cards. <laughs> the point is knowing the the character and not how pretty your card is, Jen. Not how pretty your card is. You put them on cards, laminate them like crazy. <laughs> it's not about how pretty it is, okay? It's about just memorizing what's on there. <laughs> She makes the prettiest cards, okay? She invests so much time on her kids; it's insane. But her kids are super smart. Um, so um, then we start teaching them the different sounds each characters make. When they're little, it comes innately. Okay, when I read words, you know, 会计师或者我会什么 they instantly know. Oh, this word makes two sounds. Actually, babies just get it. It's the older kids that are like, wait, what? <laughs> so for older kids, we list them out, and they're like, oh. Wait, why'd you guys do that for? I'm like, I don't know. It's Chinese, all right. Just memorize it. There's no why. Just do it.、Um, and then for older kids, right? Now we get into、um, phrases. So let's use it in a phrase. So then you can do phrase cards or idiom cards. So、um, in our in our books, we give these four character phrases or idioms. To couple along with the characters, so these will be characters that they've all, you know, just studied, and then we'll we'll put them on like you know three per page. We'll go over it in class, where you go over it at home. And here is when you know kids who read history or like even middle schoolers are like,、oh, okay, I know what this is, right?、Um, they know some of these things. Smaller kids. You know, if you put this on a baby card, so da li yong. It's like what, right? So they're not appropriate for babies, right? They are appropriate for kindergarten and up all the way to adults. So we have some adults using this this set too.、Um, and then you could do,、uh, you know, writing. They can start writing when they're older to reinforce because when you write, it's like repeating it. Five times learning the character, 
you have to learn the stroke order. You're going a lot slower. Um, you're repeating, so then you remember it more. And then for our older kids, you know how babies, we do flashcard game with parents. Parents do a lot of stuff, right? But in our class, we utilize uh, kids' competitive nature for gaming, and they get so excited. So this summer, we had a group of kids that did 1,000 characters with us, 1,000 characters over 14 weeks, 1,000. They did 20 a day, and they were able to retain a lot. Like, I am so shocked at some of these kids. They came in knowing almost none, and now they know oh, 1,000 or at least retain 800. And we're having this big review week next week, and I'm super excited. But we do flashcard games online where they compete against each other. So then now there's... um. There's like a social factor or you can do games at home, right? Where, I don't know, you can compete with your kid, right? See who's faster. I don't know. Make it fun. So in class, um, we have like 10 kids. They fight against each other and then they get ranked one to 10. And then they study because they don't want to be the last one, right? So, and then comes a very popular question for the US, I don't know, for some reason, like the US is really fixated on, I know this many characters, am I okay now? I'm like, I don't know, are you okay? You could you could know a thousand vocab words in English and you still can't read, right? So um, it's not about how many you know, it's about also comprehension, okay? So some people, they come to the program, they their kid memorize, you know, a thousand, fifteen hundred characters. But then when we read to them or when we do uh, like bridge books, they're not understanding a lot because they don't know how to piece it together. And we teach a lot of idioms. And you know what? For Chinese books, if you don't know the idioms or the harder phrases, you're not going to be able to understand. So, um, well, the and the quick answer is, you know, as much as you can, but again, whatever you memorize needs to make sense for the child, right? So maybe some of you might be asking at eight to how many words did my kids know? And I want to say probably over a couple hundred, because if you look around the house, all the nouns in the house has a character and, you know, it's a couple hundred characters. Who here used Sage? Did anyone use Sage? Yeah, I use Sage. You use Sage? So by the time, like, so there was this craze about Sage. And then, so I was like, I don't know what the craze was. So I bought it. I bought it, but I think I bought it too late. Um, because by the time I introduced it to my kids, my little one at three, my older one at five, they went through the books and they already knew all of it. So if you, if you're at home and you say, I, you know, I don't, I don't have sage, that's totally okay. Or you use another set that's totally okay. The main point is you have to use words that your kid understands, and then they'll memorize it really quickly. You know, like if you have a laptop at home, a cup at home, you label it with the words, just make sure it's, it fits their age. So here's another very popular question. See, I'm answering all the questions that come up in the group, right? When can they read independently? Okay. For little toddlers, they can read and reread books that you've read together. Well, they know all the characters in there, no. But if you read to them twice, three, four, or five times the same book, they will go back and pick up words every single time that they reread it themselves. So always have books laying. Why was my house so crazy and everything was on the floor is because I needed my child to have access. <laughs> Nancy, what were you going to say? <laughs> You're laughing okay. at me. You know, it drove me crazy, right? You know, it drove me crazy to have all that stuff on the floor. But, but you I know, it's okay, because if we're so crazy on teaching and learning, some parts of life just got to give. And if it's messy for a little bit, that's fine, too. Yeah, that's right. exactly. Yeah, I, I put learning first at that time. So 
Anyway, our house was crazy. I had a bunch of books and flashcards on the floor all the time. So then they can repeat and relearn whatever we did. And same thing with older kids. Read with them. Put it there. Tell them to reread it. It's fine. It's fair game. But the question was, no, that's not what I meant. What I meant was, because a lot of moms do this to me. How many characters do I need for them to read independently? Right? And I always go back to, you got to have first have comprehension. Okay. Once you have the comprehension, this may be hard to accept, but you need 3,500 characters. Comprehension first, then 3,500 characters that you recognize. You do this over the course. So, so like people in Taiwan, okay, they do it until they're in sixth grade. So they have until sixth grade to, to do that. And some people want say, you know, there's a lot of controversy with this thing right here, zu ying. Does anyone learn zu ying here? Anybody? Yeah. Jen? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Veronica? Great. It's, that's not a question. That's a yes, right? There's a reason why it's invented. Because there's a lot of good stuff that comes with it. Because at age... Uh, let's say second grader here, a fast second grader here can read Harry Potter, right? You're not going to be able to read Harry Potter in Chinese in second grade here, unless if you have this and this. And most of the time you cannot in invest that time for them to, to get here. Okay. So you got to give them books that are just as interesting without knowing 3,500. And you got to build on comprehension. So the filler here is zu ying. And then here's where, here's where a lot of people that are not on this call or are saying with their muted button, I grew up in Hong Kong. We did it without zu ying or ping ying. Okay, we did straight character. Yeah. And you also went to school, you know, six, eight hours a day memorizing those characters you know people in china they make their first graders memorize three thousand characters we're not doing that here and what happens is your child so a lot of people do the the sage 500 where they memorize that that i don't know who it was that started it in the u.s but they say 500 characters was enough right but it's totally not enough you do the 500 characters and then you see this fallout in the first and second grade of your child just not wanting to do anything with Chinese anymore. That's because it's not interesting. So going back to last week, that environment, when I said bring interesting material, you, it has to be interesting. And if they can't read interesting books, they're going to stop reading. Okay, so this is why I, you know, taught Zhu Ying because in Taiwan, they have all these interesting books up until fifth and sixth grade. So I know I always have access to the stories that my daughters need to read, even if they don't know 3,500 yet, right? Uh, until they reach that point, I'm never gonna run out of books for them to read. And that was so important to me. You could do the same with Ping Ying, but I'll tell you the, the books with Ping Ying, I think they only go up to second grade level because in China, they don't need ping in beyond second grade. They already know 3,500 and up characters. Okay, so you're going to miss out um, on a lot of books past the second grade level. So then the, the stories just aren't interesting at the second grade level. Um, I, I'll talk about how to teach doing and why it's porn, but I wanted to touch on a few things like doing is great because it looks like miniature Chinese characters. It has the proper stroke order for you to write later. I had my kids, uh, you know, at a very early age, use their finger and trace over zu ying, okay, and learn it, ba um, pema, and blend it the way we can. After they learn the, some character, I'll, I started teaching them zu ying when I figured out they understand blending. You don't want to, you don't want to teach blending at age 
one because it's their minds don't work that way. But the earliest readers, once they understand how to blend in English or start blending, you can teach zuing and then you know couple it with your teaching. They learn how to write in Chinese, and so when you look. When you teach them how to write characters, they pick it up so fast, okay? Because they already know zuing, they already know proper stroke order. And then the thing is, they can express themselves. I have my kids write notes to me in Chinese. They don't know how to write the character, but they know how to how to do the sound, so they can write sentences and phrases all with zuing. That's great because kids want to express themselves. If they can't write what they want to say, they're going to stop writing. They're going to want to stop, you know. They they don't feel empowered. So little kids they they want to feel very empowered. They want to feel smart. That's very important. Feeling smart, feeling like they're the adult. So having them write you notes is very powerful. And then they can read themselves. Okay. So reading together is very important. You always want to read together every single day. But for them to be reading on their own is even more powerful sometimes because they feel almighty. You know the the look on your toddler's face, or five, six, or seven year the the moment that they can read to you. I don't know if you guys remember it, but it's like magic, right? So with zuing, you get all of that. So when can they? What does zuing bring? I guess, and I have like a little clip of my um my younger. <laughs> This is when she was three and a half years old. She learned characters first, as I, I showed you, and then I taught her doing the moment that I know that she can blend. And then there is a method that I'll talk about next time because we don't have we always run out of time. Um, that that to teach doing and not let them rely on it. Because a lot of people, again, in our group, say, "Oh no no no, don't teach doing because they're going to rely on it." That's not true. It's how you teach it and how you maintain. So、um, this is a little clip of her reading at three and a half years old,、um, and you'll see that she reads, and I test on what she reads, and I test on what she understands, and that's very important. As you read, you have to keep explaining terms, and they keep learning like a like a moving flashcard. <laughs> 如果有朋友来了，也没有地方可以坐下来看看天，看看天，我时常为此感到苦苦恼，总。Oh, I wanted to mention. So before I covered up the doing, I told her to read it and learn the words herself. Okay, and then I said I'll come and and read with you. So we usually do that. So she self self teaches because she knows doing. She can self teach herself. That's great, right? Come on, that's pretty wonderful. Doing is wonderful. Okay, I should. 叹气？什么是唉声叹气呀？好，蜗牛很害羞，只要太太阳公公一露露出笑脸，就不会躲起来。So anyway, that is that is how I read with her, and then you know, for idioms, I stop. And I explain, and the next time she reads it to me, she should know what it means, and that's why she's like, "Oh, right." Um, it's um, that's from birth. So you see that I always repeated the same technique, and then it goes on until they're toddler, and then um, even now when when they read on their own, they're they're very animated, and I love it. <laughs> you know, it's it's very good because um. I want them to be constantly thinking about like what they're reading. So anyway, today we talked about this, and I wanted to,、uh, you know, kind of review, you know, your word cards. Make sure your words are a bit coupled with movement and sound. Make sure you point. 
uh, make sure you repeat, make sure you use different fonts and make sure you use what's age appropriate. Sounds easy, but it's not because a lot of people don't do it that way. Um, next time we're going to talk about like what books should they read and then how do you teach Zhu Ying if you want to learn that. And I'm going to open up to questions. Does anyone have questions? Ooh, more people came in. How long Rock. did the whole process take? The whole process, meaning mm -hmm. what? Meaning from you flashing her to she can read herself and self-teach herself. Mm. So from I flashed from three months until I think the first time they responded to me was at seven eight month mark where they pointed i'll take i'll take two cards i'll be like okay which one is nose and then they'll like hit with their hands like which card it is and I kept doing that just to make sure that they really knew the word and not just like randomly hitting things in the air, right? So that that's when they started knowing. That's the first response that got us like super excited. And then it was like the sounds I started making and, you know, the whole, you know, feet. And then, they you know, she wiggled her feet. It was like, that was a crazy moment. But if you have older kids, like toddlers, like five, six-year-old, you can get them doing that in day one. Day one. The only reason why babies took longer is because they don't know how to talk to me. They don't know how to respond. They don't know what I want them to do yet, right? And they're not as, the, the mobility is not there yet. Veronica. 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 Yes. Uh, for, if I'm going to stick words all around the house, uh, do they have to be as big as your word card that we saw in the video when you flash to your baby? If you, how old is your child? Four. I'd say, I'd say it makes sense for four-year-olds to do at least, you know, letters, letter size, one fourth of letter size. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You don't want to okay. go too small. I, I had the half page, th those were half page, and I just printed them, um, half page till end of age two, three-ish, and then you can go with slightly smaller. The older they are, the smaller it can be. Got it. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Hi, Michelle. Hello. I'm here, finally. <laughs> Pack my kids and put them to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Anybody else have question? Michelle is our Cantonese mommy. Your Cantonese, the one you can ask Michelle. Yeah, um, my my kids are also fluent in Mandarin. So yeah. if he can read a book in Mandarin, he can read it in Cantonese too. Yeah, her kid is amazing. He's always in class and we have him read like male doing the manhua and he could do that. Perfect. Anybody else have question? Well, he has some Cantonese accent. <laughs> he does. <laughs> Just very, very Cantonese. strong Cantonese accent, but I can understand him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but Chinese I think is very good. Uh, the, pro, um, the good thing is that he's not afraid to speak. I think that's a good thing. He's, he's not afraid to make up some sound, even in Cantonese or in Mandarin, he will just say it. And then, and then um, since I, um, you know how when you see a Chinese characters, you see, we mm say, -hmm. you when he say something in Chinese, I have to guess because now he's reading a lot of difficult words that he may not, I, have, I, I personally have not taught him. Mm -hmm. So he recognized half of the characters. And so he would just say it and then 
I I know that he understand that word, but that he didn't pronounce it correctly. But then the good thing is that he continues speaking it. He's not afraid of yeah making wrong making mistakes. Yeah, yeah. No, he's definitely good, and he comes like to our classes every single day. He's listening and listening and listening and listening, running around but listening. <laughs> But my my daughter, she's now two and a half, and she's also recognized a lot of characters now. So I heard the parents saying, "Oh, how long do you do flashcards for?" So I didn't start teaching my daughter until a few months late、uh, ago, which is two and a half. But now she can recognize about ten characters in just two months from daily readings, and、um, I put flashcards around my house. So. Yeah, Mich Michelle is one that puts flashcards in her, like next to her toilet, in the wall, in her restroom. You know, like they have them everywhere, and it's probably easier for you the second time around because you already had it for Marcel, right? So yeah, yeah. But then you don't have to laminate them.、Um, I mean, I think she has more fun playing with the post-it than the the nicely printed laminate card. Yeah.、Right? So、yeah. whatever, or you just play by sidewalk chalk. Like I would in the summertime, I would just write some random characters and then ask them to use the water gun to spray that word. So these are some fun things that they can do with their flashcards. Yeah, and it will be different fonts. No, you missed the part where I said you gotta let them see you write、oh, yes. it, read it in different fonts. Make it big, make it small, make it messy, make it neat. So then they can read in all fonts. Okay.、Yes. Yeah. So, any more questions or? I have a question on your the classes you offer.、Um, yeah. So, I didn't. I started teaching my daughter Chinese probably when she was four. So she's starting to speak, and、um, we're going through stage, and you know, getting through like. Finally, getting through like the first hundred or so characters, and it's like she's slight, she's somewhat functional, but still very shy to speak. And so, I'm trying to understand like when can I get her into like some online classes? So, because I feel like I'm the only Mandarin speaker in the house, and so、mm -hmm. there's not a lot of opportunity for conversation, right? And so, I want to、mm -hmm. find more conversation for her.、Mm -hmm. uh, we have we have some kids. Ambitious kids at four, but mom sits with the kid. But we have some five and six year olds that know how to work Zoom, which is very surprising. Okay, but they come, they're excited, they're in our Pokemon class.、Um, Michelle's kid came when he was very little. She sits by him, right? But there are other five, six year olds、um, who do it themselves. They come, they listen to story. Um, and they're working the mute and unmute button. I mean, kids these days are really crazy. Oh,、well, my daughter plays. My daughter plays Pokemon Go, and like, <laughs> yeah. So they know how to work it. Then they can come and they can sit and come chit chat and come, you know, listen to stories or do the do the flash card game if they wanted to do the the hands one thousand right.、Um, but. I would probably ease them in, and but you already taught Zhuing, right? Yeah, I mean she's been in. What she did one year of、uh, like Saturday Chinese school, so I think there's a lot of the pieces are in play. Just like I'm trying to find ways to just get her more ex conversational exposure. Yeah. yeah. So um, our so our classes. So I I design our classes to fit U.S.、Right. ambitious tiger mom. I don't know. You guys know my classes are so different. So for our Zhuying Mastery class, we、oh. retyped Do La A Mong, but in、okay. in all Zhuying, right? Oh, fantastic! <laughs> I have that at home. So it's. But we typed it. We I had my teachers type retype Do La A Mong in Zhuying, so they're learning Zhuying. They're writing、okay. sentences, and、okay. they're reading something above their age level,、right. but yet. Writing and reading and doing and getting very fluent and efficient at it,、mm -hmm. um, and that's our you know doing mastery level. First、okay. grade level, Kangshen. We use a、uh, Kangshen text, but 
the writing is very simple because Kangshen, I think the first lesson was like ER sense or something like that. Yeah. And it's, it's extremely boring, but it's for writing. Okay. So what we do to complement that is because, because we have a lot of moms like Michelle or Jen or, you know, Nancy, their kids read really fast because you guys keep on, you know, doing the thousand character, 500, whatever it is. So our reading material is always harder. So what we read in class would be like bridge books, but then what they write would be, you know, first grade Kangshun, if that makes any sense. Um, and then we have a mixed age in there. Okay. Okay. That's, that's, that's thanks. Thanks for that. That really helps me think about it. Yeah. So you could, I mean, people, you guys can do the same at home. You could have them write you letters and doing right. And read something harder. So that's what we do in class. And then we first, first grade, first level function, we were, we're teaching idioms already. We teach idioms in our two in class. I mean, we're teaching idioms. Like the moment you step into our classes, Michelle and Jen, know, they're like, can you give me a list of everything you, you taught some moms ask? I'm like, no, <laughs> because, because I think one student who's taken my classes from the beginning of time till now has like over a thousand or 1500 or I don't know how many Jen has now I I lost count because because it's a lot we the moment that you step into our class it's it's going to be phrases and idioms I think that's great for like because that's actually where we struggle at home it's I can I can do very basics but I'm not that creative right so I think you know okay okay I think that that really helps thanks okay any other Michelle Oh, I just want to come and like the way I see her class, um, Julie's class is that instead of giving my my child like an hour of nonsense entertainment at home, I just open, you know, turn on the screen and zoom and do the entertainment. This is my my child's entertainment. It's, I don't see it as a class. So instead of me reading the story or he watched some other stuff on YouTube, he see, you know, they play, um, they do comic book or play games on, on screen. So that's my son's screen time. <laughs> <laughs> that one hour screen time, daily screen time is Julie's class. Yeah, um, we, we try to, we try to make it entertaining. We are, you know, we're, we're not teaching, we're entertaining. Yeah, so that's my, my child's um, entertainment and no other screen time um, during weekdays for school days. So I don't see it as a class and he doesn't see it as a class neither. And then he got upset that like, we don't have internet assets when we are camping. And then like, oh, I cannot play in Pokemon <laughs> the, the, the class and then he, they got upset. <laughs> you guys got internet. I saw you guys camping at the Pokemon class. Just one time. And then the other time we, we were out and then there was no other reception beside the, um, yeah. the lamping site. <laughs> yeah, they get crazy in that class with the comics. It's so crazy. I don't understand the whole Pokemon oh, phenomenon mm -hmm. thing. So, I still I, don't understand it. <laughs> yeah. But they have fun in there. Well, Jen, Jen's, Jen's kids are are older, so they, they might have a different experience on whether this is entertaining. <laughs> well, I want to say that, you know, I think the presentation was really good because it reminds us, you know, what we have to do to learn Chinese as overseas kids. Um, you know, parents that really want their kids to have some degree of, um, you know, Chinese speaking ability. Um, so that, that was really good. And I think that um, my kids like Michelle's, you know, I turn it on rain or shine, you're going to sit in front of the screen and you're going to listen to it. And I think it really helps even if, you know, the teachers are not talking about you know, the material, they're actually giving my kids a lot of, you know, common talk in my house. I'm the, I'm, I speak Cantonese and uh, my husband, uh, no, he doesn't even speak anything, just English. And it's, you know, it's so hard for us to even get the Mandarin in. And I don't really want them to hear my bad, bad, bad Mandarin. So, you know, that hour or more um, of every day, Chinese contact is so much more effective than a large dose of um, Sunday school or Saturday school um, that we were doing before. And so, you know, I really see um, 
my daughter being more interested in Chinese and just being able to, you know, begin to converse a little more. And she understand not just what's in the book. Well, she doesn't really understand it all, but she's trying to understand what's, you know, being presented in the class, but also try to learn how to talk like Julie or the teachers um, or how the kids talk in class. I think that's invaluable for me um, only because, you know, she doesn't really have a lot of Chinese input otherwise. So, you know, all of that is really important. And as a Cantonese mom, you know, I never learned Juyin or anything like that. And it's like, why am I learning this stuff? And Julie's like, no, oh, you don't learn it. And I'm like, oh, no, I don't. But it is invaluable, especially for Cantonese family to learn Zuyin. I mean, it's absolutely, you know, critical for them to learn it unless you want, you know, half, half Cantonese, half Mandarin, you know, coming out of your kid's mouth. Otherwise, you got to learn the Zuyin, you know, if they say it wrong, it's okay. But look at it. What does it say? You know, you ask them, what does it say? Hey, you know, this is not quite right. You know, the tone is not right. The whatever is not right. And it's invaluable to, um, you know, help them to speak better uh, Mandarin. I think it's it's so important. I know that, you know, I hear her talk. I hear my daughter now speak so much better ever since, you know, she have learned uh, Zhu Yin. I mean, she's still, you know, off and all over the place, but she's doing so much better. So I think um, for native, um, you know, Mandarin speaker, it's important to do Zhu Yin, but for Cantonese speaker or, you know, other dialect speaker in particular, it is invaluable, I think, to to learn the Zhu Yin, particularly of, um, you know, since Julie was saying, you know, yeah, it's great to learn Pinyin, which, you know, if you know it, that's great. And besides, you know, after third grade, they know both anyway. But, you know, Pinyin, they just stop. There is no books after second grade or even first grade with Pinyin. And now they can't read, you know, they, they can't read at all because they can't, you know, they haven't attained 3,500, 5,000 words that is necessary necessary to, you know, read the um, more difficult books. And so I just think that, you know, a lot of what you said is spot on. And it's completely Julie's fault that she wasn't my friend when my kids were growing up, because then, you know, they would have, I would have flashed them up this whole time, but I couldn't <laughs> you have flash them. them. Oh, <laughs> not naked flash them, but flash the flashcards. I could have <laughs> flashcards to them when you know they were young and now they're all behind so it's completely julie's fault just <laughs> but that's it but i i um i value you know uh what you say and i think a lot of what you said is so uh, i i train her i mean i train angie now i make the kids in first grade so when your kids come to class i do the same as i do with my kids right so like i talk more we talk more let them listen more then they start opening up then they start talking second Second year, I teach them to type. So they convert Zuing to pinging. Now they know both. So now they type, okay? Why do I want them typing? Is because third year, Michelle, your kid is gonna go crazy because it's gonna be a lot of work. So I make Jen's kid do presentations. We learn Google slide and we learn PowerPoint or whatever it is that they wanna present in. And I make them do presentations and we have themes. And I tell them exactly what I want to hear. Point one, I want you to say this. Point two, I want you to give me this. Point three, I want you to give me that. So now her kid is now doing five to 10 minute presentations in our third year class. So, you know, it's the same philosophy I use with my children. I talk more now, but you talk more to me later. And um, after third year, now we're moving on to our first fourth year class. Now I'm like, okay, you guys did presentation. You guys talk. Talking is much easier than writing it down formally. So fourth year, I'm pretty excited. So Jen, Jen's daughter will be attending our first fourth year class, which is very exciting. We will be working on multi-paragraph essays because now that they've done presentation, each slide becomes a paragraph and they've had some practice, but informally, right? So I'm very low stress. Last year, they did a presentation. I tell them to write it up afterwards, whatever you said, informally. But now we're gonna turn that into formal. So fourth grade, we're doing multi-paragraph essays. I'm not- I don't wanna stress anyone out. <laughs> I, I'm not as excited because I know I'm going to have to be somewhat involved, but I, I really appreciate the opportunity for her to, you know, practice talking. It was so difficult for her to do the presentation. The first one, the second one, even up to the third one, it was like, oh my God, 
the, uh, uh, it's just going to end. She asked me, how many more are there? <laughs> you know, then really it did become easier and the opportunity to, you know, just struggle through it and you're presenting it. It was really low stress. I mean, you know, the teacher's like, good job, good job. Everybody, you know, cheers you on. It's really not like, oh my God, look at this. This slide is wrong. That slide is, you know, they don't do that. They're really, you know, show about it. If you didn't have a lot of time presenting it, you know, uh, put in a lot of effort, it's okay. Everybody is happy. You know, we understand what you're saying. You know, we give, sometimes the kids give suggestions, things like that, but they're really true about it. And if you want to put more effort into it, you can too. And it really improves the, um, you know, just the expression and just put thoughts in your slide and how would you do that? And so by the end, she has a lot of ideas of how she wants to present it. And it's just the opportunity to do it. And even in a English school, but we go to a Spanish school, we don't have that. We don't have the opportunity to, you know, put some something that you, you, well, I don't know about love, but something that you like to, you know, talk about. I don't know. We don't have that opportunity to present it. And you have to do that. I know that in middle school, in high school, you have to do that. I see my older kids. They suddenly, bam, you know, they're expecting you to be able to do it. I don't know how much the um, teachers are helping them, but bam, all of a sudden, everything is in presentation form. Everything in high school is in, you know, um, um, PowerPoint presentation form. And, you know, this is just a really nice way to use Chinese to um, present it. And she even switched it, you know, in school to, you know, do some of that stuff in Spanish. So it's great. Like it kind of applies to um, other areas of study as well. So, you know, even though I was like, oh my God, I can't believe we have to do, you know, I've got to help her. She got help practice with me. I can't believe we have to do it, but it really was a, um, good way to um practice and yeah. just you know have her get used to it it was it was great yeah I don't give you any time to worry over it or stress over it because we do one every two weeks you just do it your first one may be horrible second one may be better third one better and you do it by volume so I don't look for quality in the beginning but you do so much okay this is very Asian thinking right you should practice practice. We don't spend five weeks on one presentation. We spend one week and the next week you present. You don't have time to get scared. You don't have time to worry. You just do it. And I wanted them to have a, a safe space to just make mistakes. Everybody's making mistakes and just do it. So you guys should, if you guys don't attend class, you guys should do it at home and let them, you know, practice because that's a way to practice speaking once they are, you know, third year and out elementary school. If you want to see a sample, I have it on my YouTube channel. There's like a list of save the world, whatever. Those are all from our third year classes. You guys can see a sample of what our, what our third year students do. Any more questions? <laughs> We're over again. <laughs> or everybody good? I just wanted to ask, is there a place I can rewatch the your talk on environment setup? So I'd love to share that with a friend who just had a new baby. Oh yeah. Um it's on it's on our YouTube channel. Okay. <laughs> I put it on our YouTube so they can go and uh rewatch that. Okay, thank you so much. No problem. Thank you guys for coming. I think when um yeah, I think reading Julie's blog, the whole entire blog is helpful too if you're not able to attend any of these seminars because that's what I did. I read the her entire blog before and then like kind of got started how to teach my kids Chinese. So spend some time doing it and you've got friends who are pregnant have plenty of time that do that now before baby's born. Yeah, when you're in ba baby stage. So just blast, blast the video because that's how they should get set up, you know? Um, spread the word. Let's all have little geniuses flying around. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you guys for showing up because there's like a lot of people who register who didn't show up. <laughs> all right. So have a great night. And then until next time, we'll go over some books and how to, how to actually teach Zuling. Thank Thanks you. guys. Thank you. That was great. Thank you. Thank you.